This is a vodcast for my AP Physics students about a problem using our uniform acceleration model. The source of the problem is College Physics 5th edition by Surway and Fawn. In this problem, we have a car traveling with a constant speed of 30 meters per second passing a stationary police car. One second later, the police car takes off with a uniform acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. And the question is, how much time elapses before the cop catches the speeder? So when I first started to think about this problem, I imagined a position time graph. And here is one that I drew. And it shows a car moving at a constant speed. Because of the diagonal line, we know it's a constant speed. And I have the car starting at a time of zero and just continuing for a while because I don't know how long the car will be moving for. And because of the one second uh, mentioned in the problem, I, I drew a, a one under the t-axis right there. The second vehicle we're tracking is a police car. And it stays uh, stationary for one second while the cop decides that the driver is speeding. And then the cop accelerates at a rate of 3 meters per second squared until such point that the cop catches the driver. So to show the acceleration, I have a curved uh, graph on this XT graph. And it, the intersection between the car and the police uh, happens at some later time t, which is what we're trying to solve. Once I had the graph of the situation in my head, then I felt comfortable with moving on to an algebraic representation. So here I'm relying on the equation that we derived previously, that the position of the car at any future time is equal to the initial position x0 plus v0 times delta t, that's the initial velocity times the time interval, plus 1 half a, the acceleration, times delta t squared. And I decided that the initial position would be 0, and the initial velocity is, is 30 meters per second, and I don't know uh, the time I need yet. But then I started to feel a little bit uncomfortable. I said that if I let um, the initial position be 0 for the car, then I've got to deal with this one second gap where the cop is stationary, but the car is still moving. And I decided that it would be easier mathematically if I just didn't uh, deal with that. So what I decided to do is to set t equals 0 when the cop starts to accelerate. And if t equals 0 at that point, then that means the car is already 30 meters ahead because the car is moving at 30 meters per second. I show the consequences of that change here. So now, instead of the initial position being 0, the initial position is 30 meters to reflect the fact that when the cop starts to accelerate, the car is already 30 meters ahead. So I have an expression x equals 30 meters plus 30 meters per second times t. Since the car never accelerates, its acceleration is 0, and so that third term helpfully drops out. I guess this means that I should then make a new graph to reflect my understanding. So here we show the car having an initial position of 30 meters, and then the police accelerating uh, from rest, and they intersect at some time. Now let's write an expression for the police car. We still have our golden relationship x equals x0 plus v0 delta t plus 1 half a delta t squared. And the key thing for this whole problem, I think, is to realize that now that we've set t equals 0 at the moment that the cop starts to accelerate, that delta t will be the same for the cop as it is for the speeder, that the time that elapsed um, will begin when the cop starts to accelerate and will end when the cop catches the driver. We can then sub in into this equation so we have x for the cop equal to 0, the initial position for the cop, plus 
0 times delta t, because the cop is stationary at the beginning, plus 1 half times the cop's acceleration, 3 meters per second squared, times delta t squared. If the times for the two vehicles are the same, and therefore the positions are the same as well. So we are allowed to set the two equations we build equal to each other. On the left I have the equation we built uh, about two minutes ago for the car, 30 meters plus 30 meters per second delta t, that's the expression for the position of the car at any time t. We're going to set that equal to the expression we just derived, 1 half times 3 meters per second squared times delta t squared, and on the right hand side I'm letting all the zeros just drop out. When we put these equal together, we can rearrange this into a quadratic equation, which turns out to be 1.5 meters per second squared times delta t squared minus 30 meters per second times delta t minus 30 meters equals zero. This is a quadratic equation. If you forgot how to solve for the quadratic, the roots of the quadratic, you can check your textbook on page 1042. When you, when you solve the quadratic, which I'm not going to show, you get a positive root of 21 seconds. You also get a negative root, but that doesn't make sense for us physically here, so I won't talk about it. You can also ask the question, well, how far away from the start of the chase did it end? And in order to, to find that answer, you can just sub in our result of 21 seconds back into the expression we built for the police car. So we have our golden equation, x equals x naught plus v naught delta t plus 1 half a delta t squared. Uh, the x naught and the v naught terms drop out again because they're both zero. So we have x equals 1 half times 3 meters per second squared times 21 seconds squared. The second squared terms drop out, and so we're left with a unit of meters and a magnitude of about 660 meters. That part about the distance wasn't in the original question. I just put it in because I like it. And in the same vein, here's how you would do this if you didn't have any uh, pencil or paper and you just wanted to do this in Microsoft Excel. So here I'm trying to show the spreadsheet. You have columns A, B, and C. And on the left, I'm showing row numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and then a whole bunch later down to 22. In column A, what you do is you put the time in seconds. And because Excel doesn't really like uh, labels, just put uh, numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, and skip down all the way to 21. In column B, this is going to be your position for the car. You're going to type this in exactly. The equal sign, left parentheses, A1, asterisk, 30, close parentheses, plus 30. No spaces anywhere in there. What this says to Excel is, take whatever value is in cell A1, multiply by 30, and to that result, add 30. And then you're going to hit Enter. So what you should see when you hit Enter is the not the formula you wrote, but the calculation. And the number should be in cell B1, the number should be 30. Then you're going to go over to column C, and in cell C1, you're going to write an expression for the police car. This is basically x equals x naught plus v naught delta t plus 1 half a delta t squared. And as we already found out, the x naught and the v naught will be 0, so we won't even talk about that here. You're going to type this in exactly the equal sign 0 0.5 asterisk 3 asterisk A1, asterisk A1. This tells Excel, take whatever's in cell A1, multiply by itself, and then multiply that by uh, basically one and a half. And you're going to hit enter. So in cell C1, you should now see zero, which is the initial position of the police car. Then you're going to take cells B1 and C1, and you're going to copy them into the cells below to cell B2 and C2, B3 and C3, etc., for a whole bunch of cells. 
when you do that, Excel will automatically calculate the positions. So you, you never have to tell Excel that your seconds are changing because you took care of that in uh, column A. So if you go down to cell, say, B10, you should see, uh, when you put your cursor there, you should see equals A10 times 30 plus 30 because it already automatically does it. That's why Excel is so cool. When you graph this, that is by highlighting cells A1 through cell C22, when you graph this, you should see a graph that looks just like the last graph that I drew in the movie. And you can read off the graph that the intersection should occur at around t equals 21 seconds. I leave that as an exercise for you. Thanks for watching.